Hi everyone, this lesson we're going to be talking about neuter nouns of the second declension. Uh, but before we get to the paradigm of how this is all going to look, I want to take a brief moment to review uh, both masculine nouns of the second declension as well as our definite article. So let's start off with the definite article first on the left. Remember what the definite article in Greek is, is something similar to the definite article in English, but with some exceptions. Uh, well, to begin with, we've got these three genders, right? We've got masculine, feminine, and neuter. That's the, the traditional order. There's no reason to put men before women or masculine before feminine here, but this is just how it's done in the past, so I want to be the identical to other books. Uh, that's maybe a bad reason to keep on doing it this way, but that's how we're going to do it. And then we remember that we don't have a vocative article. Only the nominative and then the oblique cases, genitive, dative, and accusative. But we do have them in both the singular, which we have up here on this top column, and then the plural on the bottom. So again, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative. Just like masculine, feminine, neuter, there's no real reason that we give this order. Between the nominative and the genitive, you can always find out, well, what type of noun, what class, what declension are we working with? So that's the reason why they are first. There's really no reason to put data before accusative other than convention, so we're going to go with it. So we'll remember, this is going back to, I guess, chapter 3, when we came in contact with the feminine article. We had hey, tes, te. And remember, when the genitive or dative is accented on the ultima, we get a circumflex, and then tain. This was like our class A of first declension nouns, but then in the plural we had high, tone, tice, and then toss. Good, and that's a long alpha. Books won't show that, but you should know it. Long alpha and then acute accent. And then we learned also last week in the last unit, in chapter 5, uh, the masculine. So we had ha, the, and then we had to. Again, circumflex accent on the genitive as on the dative, to, and then ton in the accusative. And then in the plural we had hoi, tone, tois, and then tus. We remember that this diphthong, this omicron, upsilon, is really equal to omicron plus omicron. So it's just a long omicron of what we have here. So we noticed a few things. We noticed that there is no accent in the nominative. These are what we call proclitics. There is also no ta. They began with vowels. And these are short diphthongs, we remember, but we were pretty good on that. And then finally, we had the neuter. And this one was a little bit different. We had an accent, ta. But then in the obliques, the neuter looked a lot like the masculine. Tu, to, and then, but just then, ta. And a reminder here that in the neuter, nominative always always, let me triple underline that, is equal, or and when I say that I mean has the same form, to the neuter, or sorry, to the accusative. Of course we're talking neuter. Reason being here, neuter things tend not to be agents quite as often. They tend to be objects. They tend to be direct objects, what we use the accusative case for. When they do become the subjects of the sentence and the nominative, it was easy enough just to borrow that accusative form because that happened enough. Where people, people are often subjects, so we definitely have a kind of special subject form, a definite nominative that is distinct from the accusative in the masculine and feminine, not so much in the neuter. All right, but then if we get back to the plural, we had ta, and that's a short alpha. Again, books won't write in the, the brevis mark uh, or the breve, but we have that here. But then in again, again, in the obliques, we still look a lot like the masculine. But then again, same rule, nominative in the singular and plural is always equal to the accusative in the neuter. So we have a short alpha ta, just like that. Great. 
What I want to say here, and the reason why we kind of did this review before even getting to the second declension neuter nouns, is this is what we're going to see. We're going to see this pattern, the second declension pattern, as we'll discover, appear also in the neuter nouns. So just as the second declension masculine nouns had endings very similar to our masculine article, we're going to have second declension neuter nouns also looking very much like our neuter article. But let's, let's review uh, a masculine noun, right? So we had hall logos, that was kind of our beginning. The word, the speech, the reason, logic, logos means a lot. So if we go through two, and then we're gonna have a lot of rhyming here. Tu lagu, to logo, ton logon, and remember, I'm, I'm making this a grave accent because this word is followed immediately by another word. Uh, so we need to make what I have as an acute here, kind of in the absolute freedom of this paradigm. Now that we're in a kind of linguistic context, I'm making this grave. So that's our singular. Let's move to the plural. Hoi, logoi, the speeches, the words, tone, logon, accent on the penultimate here over the omicron this is not equal to the first declension where we had all the genitive plurals ending in what was originally alpha plus omega nu which then contracted to an always circumflex omega we don't have that so the accent can be persistent can remain on the omicron tois logois and then finally, tus logus. Great, I left off the vocative here, it's fine. Let's now, however, erase all of this. I'll need a bigger eraser, that should do it. Hey, all right. I wish I could enlarge the uh, eraser on the actual blackboard, that would be a handy thing. But now let's go to, and this is chapter 6.1, and let's talk about the, uh, the neuter, nouns of the second declension. So draw our handy chart here. And we're going to keep the article for that extra practice. And the nice thing is we only have one class of second declension neuter nouns. All of them adhere to what's, uh, sorry, this formula that we're going to be putting, this paradigm. Remember for the feminine, or for the first declension at least, we had four different feminine types, A, B, C, D, and then two masculine types that were different but corresponded to A and B of the feminine. So that was on our first. Now that we're in second declension, we had two different types of, well, we sort of had one type of, uh, well, we had logos, right, which was masculine, but then we also had nasos, which was feminine, but had the exact same endings. Neuter doesn't mess around with any of this. If it has a neuter ending, it is neuter. <laughs> and these things will be very clear. So anyway, let me uh, find my pen. I lost it there somewhere. Let me see if I, if I make it bigger, if that helps. All right, well, this is our article, or will be our article. And then the word that we're going to be working with is gift, doron, and then endings. So that word is doron, but uh, you might know the myth of Pandora, We'll get to why that's a alpha or an A, uh, but that's all gift. Uh, that's uh, Hesiod gives a little ec uh, etymology. This is all in Hesiod's works and days. This is where the myth of Pandora is introduced. Um, Pandora means all gift, but we'll get to that soon. So again, I've kind of lost my mouse here, but that's okay. We can get through the rest of this. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and now we will put in evocative. And then I guess we'll need a little bit more on the chart in a bit, but we can get started here. We're going to need a bright color to get us going. Again, playing, shooting in the dark here. So pardon the extra little scratches. You know, I'm going to pause and I'm going to see if I can get fix that problem so we'll be set in the future. This is not helping. Pause. Here we go.
And here we are back now with our <laughs> brush, which is going to be a useful thing, it turns out. So the article as we had it was ta, and again I'll put a grave accent on, just so we can follow it. And then that word was doron, doron, just like that. And the ending, as we can see here, is omicron new. That's frustrating, isn't it? That looks a lot like our accusative masculine singular, right? Where we had ton log on. Well, how would you know ton log on isn't neuter? Well, it has a different article. That's a giveaway. This is a masculine article. That's, that's the neuter. Otherwise, you don't really know. Uh, so this is one reason why articles can be so useful in Greek. We can be happy we have them where Latin doesn't. And two, but here we have just doru, so that's that's straightforward. This has now become long, so this accent becomes acute. I can put the ending there. Data is going to be again what we're used to. We yield a subscript over the kind of the regular vowel here of a long persuasion, o. So we'll have again dora. Kind of looks fun. But the the accusative. I mean, I'm writing an extra col uh, row here, but. Really, we could just say it's always identical to the nominative. This is always going to be redundant, but it's worth doing. Ta doron. Again, we go, obviously the form's going to be identical. Ending, again, identical. Vocative ending, also identical and neuter. So we don't really have an article. We just put the O in as a placeholder. But again, the nice thing here, we've got three that are identical. That's really handy. That's really handy. All right, let's scroll down and look at the plural. I'm just gonna keep everything green here. Why not? Dative, and then accusative, and vocative. And again, we can just already know these are all going to be identical. That's gonna save us some time, or at least save us some thought. I think I'm gonna write them all out. So time might not be saved. And then Dora. So these are short alphas, both of these. Ta dora, dora. So ending short alpha, ending in the plural again, tone. But again, like the masculine second declension, no funny business putting accent on here. The accent stays where it normally would under normal rules of accentuation. Nothing funky, no contraction. Toys, again, this looks a whole lot like the nominative plural. We'd have Tois logois here. This is why we call them both parts of the second declension, because they're, they're practically the same thing. But again, now that we're into the accusative and it's neuter, we've got the handy rule, these are always going to be equal. I'm really just copying what's up above. So sorry, that's an ois. And that doesn't necessarily need an accent. Let me rewrite that accurately. Ah, own, ois, ah. And then again, ta. Dora, uh, except this is vocative, so there is no article. What I meant to write was O, oh, a much <laughs> more elegant O oh than what we had up here. Uh, so let's quickly recap. We remember that this is a second declension noun, just like hall logos, but where that was masculine and hey nesos was feminine, all these, by the way, having genitives and ooh. This is a kind of giveaway that this ending in os, then ending in ooh, is what defines our second declension. Now we can add ta, dora, or doron, sorry, We're not in the plural. Ta, doron. And what can we say about that? That's a grave accent. Well, this is nice. Nominative is equal to the accusative is equal to the vocative. And then we have typical second declension endings on the genitive and dative, both singular and plural. So really, if you know logos and nasos, this won't be tricky. The things that you're going to be wanting to pay attention to and marking as different is both is these endings, but it's nice that they at least repeat so we get used to them. And it's a little funny that this goes into an alpha. Again, I made the note that, well, this looks a lot like ton logon, 
This also looks a lot like, say, Tain Thalata. How do we know, if we were just to see Thalata on its own, that that's accusative or nominative singular, or maybe vocative singular feminine? Let me rewrite this all. That's going to be a he thalata, or maybe an o. So we have, again, a short alpha as an ultimate. This is kind of frustrating, but the thing is you'll know. You'll know that Doron from your dictionary, from learning the verb or the word, that that's a neuter singular second declension. You'll be able to spot these, and half the time they're going to have an article which will make it even clearer. Um, so, but we're starting to see lots of ambiguities, some morphological ambiguities in Greek between these ons and ahs. But we're, don't worry about them. The Greeks were able to handle them, so will you. So that'll wrap up our lesson for right now. Stay tuned for uses of the data in our next installment. See you then.